This is the GAC Weekly presented by the Great American Conference. Good morning. I'm Joey McWilliams. Glad to be with you today as we have a lot going on right now in the GAC. Of course, football, volleyball, soccer, all of that starting to come to the close of the regular season, and basketball is right around the corner. Now, you want to check out the GAC Countdown to Tip-Off series. That is on the conference website, greatamericanconference.com, as we preview all 12 women's and men's basketball teams and talk about uh, their chances this season, talk about some of the players uh, that are coming back, new faces to these programs as well. Michael Westbrook and I have the opportunity to visit with all of the coaches in the GAC, and we think you will enjoy that. Again, that's at greatamericanconference.com. In the meantime, football going on, three games left in the regular season. The big one this week is going to be, well, not really on one of the sites of the conference. It's actually a neutral site. It's in El Dorado. It's the Murphy USA Classic, and and this year it pits Henderson State versus Southern Arkansas. That's going to be on Saturday. Volleyball also, the regular season is winding down. Five teams have already punched a ticket to go to Hot Springs to be a part of the GAC postseason conference tournament. Harding at 12-1 and in GAC play. Right now at the top of the standings, Henderson State and Southwestern each at 11-2. and Arkansas Tech 9-4 and and Washita at 8-5. and all five of them will be and can already be making their plans to be in Hot Springs. There are three spots remaining, and basically five teams right now competing for those final three spots in Hot Springs, Southern Nazarene, Oklahoma Baptist, Northwestern, Southeastern, and Monticello competing for those final three spots. In the meantime now, we are joined today live by the athletic director from East Central University, Dr. Jeff Williams. And Dr. Williams, thank you very much for being with us today on the GAC Weekly. We appreciate that. Uh, you have so much going on right now. I mean, it's, it's one of those busy times of the season all the way around with football, with volleyball, and then, of course, basketball. It's a week and a half or so away. Absolutely. Joey, thanks for having us. Uh, yeah, it is. You don't know if you're coming or going right now during the year. I tell you, <laughs> the only busier time of the year, I think, for an athletic director is maybe January. Right, uh, and, and people don't understand that. But January is you're coming out of of the fall winter sport, but you're full swing with winter. You got all your spring sports starting up. You got all your off seasons going right when you get back from uh, the semester break. And I tell you, January is is busy. But I tell you what, November, end of October, November is a close second. <laughs> it, 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 but it's a fun time though, right? It is. It's exciting. You know, I mean, people are in uh, races to finish out their conference schedule strong. See who's going to get the uh, automatic qualifiers, see who's going to get the at-large bids for the postseason. Uh, and it is. It's This is kind of what the year – this, to me, is what kind of kicks off the year's success this time of year because you spend a long time working for this area uh, of the calendar to see what we're going to be doing and who's going to go where. And It's fun. It's exciting for the kids. Well, we, we wanted to take the opportunity to visit with you today as you are part of one of the NCAA committees and – you know, not only for what you do at East Central and also for the Great American Conference, but on a national scale, as you're on the Committee for Competitive Safeguards and Medical Aspects of Sports. That's just a long title in and of itself, so <laughs> there has to be yeah, a lot. Yeah, we, we call it the CSMAS, just to be sure. And we, we, uh, you have to stop sometimes and remember what those uh, letters stand for. <laughs> well, tell us what this committee is all about. What do you do as you serve on that particular board? Well, of course, the NCAA is uh, is the governing body for all college sports that, that we're involved in here. There's over 1,100 NCAA institutions, you know, with three divisions, and a lot of the the press and the media out there uh, on a national scale focuses on Division One. But you know, there are three divisions. Most people know that Division One, Two, II, and Three. And there's only a handful of committees that are on our membership wide or division wide, and the CSMAS is one of those. Um, you know, and when it comes right down to it, we're a committee that's made up of about 22 people. I think we just amended the bylaws to add a 23rd uh, member last year. But we're we're trying to look over uh, NCAA policies and guidelines that affect the health and well-being of half a million college student athletes. I mean, when, when you try and wrap your head around that number, wow. we have five, over 500,000 student athletes that are NCAA uh, student athletes in this country, and we're we're doing work that affects 
all of them or looks out for the well-being of all of them. You know, that that really is something that not as many people think of right off the bat. When you, when you think about going to watch a football game or uh, a basketball game, soccer match, whatever the case may be, you're going to watch those teams play, the, the competition that's actually out there on the field to play, whatever that field may be. You all can't just think about that. You have to think ahead and think about how to protect those kids. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things, you know, with my background in athletic training, I've had a career where I've always had this uh, notion of foreseeability. You try and look at trends that's going on with your student athletes. When I was involved in direct patient care, it was what's going on right now? What am I seeing change? And and what do I see coming up? And and I think that's really the vision of the NCAA. I mean, when when you break down the NCAA, there are three pillars when when they give us some information on on uh, these committee structures, I, I recognize one of the things they told us there were three pillars for uh, the pathway for a kid and an opportunity at an NCAA school. That's academics, fairness, and well-being. Those were the three foundational pillars uh, that the NCAA kind of charges people to work on and keep those, those what do you want to say, three priorities, so to speak, in mind. And, and you don't have, all you have to do is be a, a, an average consumer of, of media out there to know that well-being in college athletes is really at the height of what's going on in the college landscape right now. Exactly. I like that word, foreseeability. I think I'm going to use that. I think that's a, <laughs> that's a good word to keep around. Well, then uh, talk about then maybe one aspect of that foreseeability. Uh, what I, I know that you all have had uh, three meetings already in 2018. Uh, what is one of those things that uh, might relate to me as the average fan that you all have already addressed to help with foreseeability? Well, I think the hot topic on, on all people's radar right now is, is concussion uh, and, and the effects of concussion. I think there's a lot of uh, a buzz right now on mental health. Um, I noticed the last two to three national NCAA meetings we've gone to when we've l- tried to listen closer to the voice of the student athlete. You know, and, and, and a lot of times we miss that, Joey. I mean, there, there's, there's me as an administrator, there's my athletic training staff, there's my coaching staff, and then there's parents, and then there's school <laughs> personnel. And, and a lot of times nobody really – I used to teach our students this in athletic training. Sometimes when you try to make a decision about this kid, sometimes you got to just stop and ask the kid, what do you want to do? What are you feeling? And I applaud the NCAA for the last two or three years. It, on the national level, we've sat back and kind of – turned around and looked at the kids and said, what are your problems? What do you have uh, that's, that's, that's making you stuck, right, in your daily life as a student athlete? We know it's a grind. It's not hard to be a student athlete, but it's hard work, right? <laughs> yes. and, and we have limits on practice time. But we also know that in a realistic day, kids are in class all morning. They have a workout in the afternoon. They have community service. They have study hall. They're, they have a lot on their plate. And we finally stepped back for the last few years and just looked at the kids and said, how can we help you? You know, I, I mean, we're making all these rules. We're making the world go round as the people in charge. But we don't often stop and ask the kids, how do we make your experience better? Um, and I think that's something that I'm noticing on the CSMAS. The great thing about this national committee is we have student representatives from every division on this committee. And so what I've what I've loved to see happen is when we get in the room, there's 20, like I said, there's 22 of us from all over the country, but there's three students in there, and they 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 embrace their leadership role. They're willing to speak up and ask questions. And to me, that's one of the most important insights is if we can get we can sit down and talk to the student athlete about what's 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 wrong in your world that we may be able to help you fix. Uh, I, I kind of look at that as what we're doing on the CSMAS right now. Well, that that really is a uh, I, I like the way that you've approached that too. It's really a big deal and and getting the input there from my goodness how many different levels you talked about from administration to coaches and parents have a say too as well. I'm a parent of a college athlete right now, and and you know th- those things are are important to me, too. So, but to get to, to get the athlete's opinion, uh, that I think that's that's a quality decision. One of the things, by the way, Dr. Williams, that that stands out to me as we're speaking with Dr. Jeff Williams from East Central University, on the 
Committee for Competitive Standards and Medical Aspects of Sports, and I know you know the acronym a little bit better than I, than I do. <laughs> I memorized all that. I want to get all those words out, Dr. Williams. But, uh, no, the the thing about that, that that you mentioned also was that there is a limited amount of time that these athletes, these student athletes, have to be able to practice each week. I, I would imagine that part of that is for the the study aspect of it, for being an, a, a student first, and that's listed first in that name, student athlete, but also from the standpoint of how their well-being as they don't need to be on the practice field, court, pitch, whatever it is, for too long that you're taking care of them in that as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 and, I, and I used to teach this when I was an athletic training faculty member. One of the most overlooked issues in the whole continuum of dealing with a, a student athlete is rest. You know, I, I mean, people, People, when, when a kid gets hurt, they, they want to focus on the swelling. They want to focus on, do we need an x-ray? Do we need to go to the doctor? And then sometimes just sitting down and resting is the best <laughs> possible thing the kid can do. But you know what? That's a very passive activity. And so people, I mean, you, you got to think, Joey, we're in, a, we're in a, uh, an environment here that's a lifestyle. I mean, the, 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 when you're a student athlete or you're a coach, you 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 live and breathe this, and it's not that you're an addict to it or that you're. It, it's just it's who you are, and so for a person to just sit down and do nothing is so very foreign. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. uh, but but what I look at on CSMAS we're doing is is when you look at, at like like the research that's going on. There are a lot of Division One schools now doing data studies on sleep, because what we've learned uh, by talking to the student athletes is. That's one of their biggest obstacles, is sleep. They can't get rest. They're, they're putting in 12- and 15-hour days, and, and not in practice, but just think about you and I and our daily life of work. It's easy to pull a 12- or 15-hour day with all the irons we have in the fire and all the things that we're doing, and when you look at the life of a student athlete, it's very simple. And I know I experience this. There's times where I can put in a long day, but when I go home, I don't necessarily want to lay down and go to sleep. I want to sit down and unwind. And I may stay up another two or three hours just watching TV or doing right. something, just nothing, because I can't go to sleep, right? Even if I laid down and went to sleep, I couldn't go to sleep. And then you end up going, oh, man, I only got four or five hours of sleep. We're finding that on the student-athlete level, too. You know, there's not a routine. There's not a cadence in their life uh, when it comes to rest and sleep. And, and that's one area that our, our group is looking for research on right now. Because the Division Ones are saying, man, this is worth that, our, our investment of time and effort to find out how do we help our kids better. Uh, and, you know, at the Division One environment, they got some resources to do that. Major research institutions, uh, they're able to pull some studies off on that. And I'll be interested to see what those, uh, those data sets start coming back looking like. Well, then, as a representative of this committee, as, as we wind down our time, and again, thank you very much for taking some time with us today on the GAC Weekly. Uh, if, if you were to be able to, you know, reach out and, and speak to just the folks, again, a regular fan like me, a regular parent of a college athlete uh, like me, or, or just someone else uh, to listen go, uh, how, how would you address them saying, we're doing what we can, and, uh, you know, where are we in the, prog in the process of this right now, and how are we getting to the future? Yeah, I think the one thing that, that has not changed throughout time is that uh, we have folks in life right now that are on immediacy, right? We want to know the answers now. We want it right now. The, the instant gratification is a theme in our society right now. And the truth is, is not a lot has changed in athletics with regards to time. You still need rest. You still need to eat right. You still got to put in the sweat equity to build the muscle. You got to put in conditioning time to get in peak level condition to perform and to make it through the fourth quarter and to get into overtime. All those things are still the same as they were 50 years ago, yet everybody looks at sports today and say it's so different. And it is. I mean, it, it, the, the, whole, the way it's packaged, the way it's presented, the way we play, all of those things are different. But when you go back to the core foundation, man, it's still a human body. You got to feed it. You got to rest it. You got to build it up. You got to let it to, re <laughs> yes. you got to let it time to recover. And none of that's really changed since Vince Lombardi coached versus the people who coach today. So I, I think there's something for us to all step back and look at and just say, listen, I know that we've got better technology, and I know we know this and we know that, but we still don't understand how the brain works with all we got. We still don't know 
how long that brain needs to recover when it's been injured. We're trying, but we don't know. <laughs> Uh, and I think that's what sometimes we have to step back in our society and just say, hey, let's draw the line here. I know we want the answer now. I know we want that. We've tried this. We've tried that. We're going to try other things, but we still don't know. I understand. Well, Dr. Williams, I have learned a lot in our time today, and, and I really appreciate you being on with us today here on the GAC Weekly. Thank you for taking some time out of your day here on a Thursday with uh, again, things winding down, volleyball winding down, football, uh, three more games on the docket. Uh, you have a lot on your plate today, right? I sure do, and it's homecoming week here at East Central. <laughs> and so I just came out of a game day meeting for homecoming, and we've got a lot planned, and, and it's uh, it's going to be a fun week. But, you know, that's why we do it. It's it's a blast. It's a wonderful work environment. It's great to see our kids succeed, and our league is doing such a great job. Joey, I appreciate the exposure you do with the Great American Conference. The members that we have in this conference are strong, and they're great people to work with, and we have a lot of fun. That's the key to this job environment is it's supposed to be fun, and we do. It's a lot of hard work, but we do have a lot of fun. <laughs> I think so, too, and thank you very much. Dr. Jeff Williams, the Director of Athletics at East Central University, homecoming this week. Don't forget about that. Koyishto Stadium there in Ada and the Tigers have homecoming, and I'm sure lots of activity uh, planned as you were talking about coming out of that meeting. That's Dr. Jeff Williams. Well, we're wrapping things up for the GAC Weekly. The GAC Weekly is presented by the Great American Conference. To hear this and more about the GAC and other college and high school sports, please be sure to stop by oklomasports.net and arkansasports.net and subscribe. This is something I'm getting used to saying a lot more of. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com and then look up Midwest Sports Net and you can see all of our video editions of the GAC Weekly. For Dr. Jeff Williams, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thank you very much for watching today. God bless you and have a great day.